Good morning. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Father God, we come to you today in the wonderful name of Jesus. The name is above every name. We thank you, Lord, for our new covenant we have with you through Jesus Christ, being the Lord and Savior. And Lord, we pray for our nation today. You said your word, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, giving thanks be made from authority over us. So Lord, we thank for our president and vice president, and senators and congressmen, legislators, Supreme Court justices, federal, state, local judges, governors, mayors, police officers, the armed forces, the CIA and FBI and the judge of our land, for their staff and families, administration, loved ones. We claim our salvation, deliverance, and protection. They hearken diligent voice word of God. And Lord, we pray for all the nation world that every nation has a gospel preached. Jesus said, go in all the world and preach the gospel every creature. Jesus said, these signs shall follow that and believe. So we thank you, Lord, the gospel is going forth with signs and wonders, that every day more people are receiving Jesus Christ as the Lord. And every day more believers are being baptized in the Holy Spirit, receiving all that Jesus bought and paid for and freely gave to us. We thank you, Lord. And Lord, I thank you for anointing me today. That I'll be able to say and do what you have me say and do. Thank you, Lord, for giving me under the Holy Ghost. And I pray for all of us, Lord, as we hear your word and hear from the Holy Ghost. We'll go forth and become doers of the Word of the Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, if you have your Bibles, let's start with us over here to Mark chapter 5. I want to read this testimony about the woman with the issue of blood. We read this a, a few days ago, and the scripture says here in verse 25, And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years, and suffered many things and many physicians, and spent all she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, came to press by and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I should be whole. And straightway the fountain of blood was dried up. She felt in her body she healed the plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing himself, that virtue had gone out, turned about the press, and said, Who touched my clothes? The disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude throng with thee, and sayest thou who touched me? He looked about about to see her done this thing. But the woman, fearing his me, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before, before him and told him all the truth. And Jesus said to her daughter, Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. Behold thy play. Now let's jump over here to Second Peter, please, and read here in Second Peter. I want to go to Second Peter chapter 1. Like you're heading towards the book of Revelation. Come through First Peter, then Second Peter. Now the scripture says here, we'll start here with verse 1 of chapter 1 of, of 2 Peter. Simon Peter, a servant apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that obtain like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. According to divine power, has given us all things pertaining to life and God is through the knowledge of him that called us to glory and virtue, whereby gives us exceedingly great and precious promises that by these we might be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption through world, in the world through lust. Besides this, give all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, and virtue, and knowledge, and knowledge, temperance, and temperance, patience, patience, godless, brotherly kindness, charity. For these things being you, they make you that you should neither be barren or unfruitful, not the Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things, is blind, can't see, cannot see afar off, and has forgotten, he's purged from his old sins. This woman with the issue of blood, you know, she heard of Jesus. Now, apparently, she must have heard he had a healing ministry, and, and, and apparently, she heard that people that touched him got healed. And so, she made the decision that she's going to do this. So, she's heard about what God was doing through Jesus Christ. Now, you know, many times, people reject that, and that's why we need to pray for people, intercede for people, their eyes understand and be enlightened, to receive what God has done. And, you know, she had this determination that once she heard, Nothing's going to stop her from receiving. And think about this. She's pressed to this multitude of people. She got to where Jesus was, touched his garment. Now, Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit. The Bible said in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus and the Holy Ghost in power, who went about doing good and healing all the oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Now, when Jesus became anointed by God, his healing ministry began. And people that would do what he said to do and receive or believe him and receive him, they'd receive their healing. Now, I want to bring up this point here that really helps me out. I trust is going to help you out. The woman was determined. You know, you and I as believers, we want to stay determined. We receive all that God is, has for us in Christ Jesus. We read there in Second Peter about the exceedingly great precious promises. And they've been given, they've been given to us. When we receive Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we receive the whole package of salvation. Now, we may not know about it, but nevertheless, healing and health, prosperity, victory, success belongs to us in Christ Jesus because Jesus became poor on the cross. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, that God put the poverty that was on mankind upon Jesus. 
and he put the sickness and the curse that was in this world upon Jesus Christ so mankind could be free. And when we receive Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, we'll realize not we came in the family of God. We have all these blessings. They belong to us. But many of us did not know that. And one of the common ways that Christians have no power is they don't believe they have any power. They, they've adopted the idea that God is in control. God runs everything. Well, he isn't. You know, he owns the earth, the Bible teaches, but he gave us dominion over this earth. Remember there in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through verse 20, that God gave dominion over mankind, this whole earth. And when you see Jesus speak to the storm, the waves, you see the dominion put in action. And as believers, we have authority over this earth. And we should exercise that authority in Jesus' name. Now we don't have authority over people. We have authority over demons and devils that influence people. And our weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not physical weapons. You know, we, we win battles by speaking God's word and praying. And we should always do that as believers, use our prayer and use our authority in prayer and speaking God's word. The, the world needs us to use our authority in Jesus' name. And we can do that if we exercise it. Now this woman, back to one of the and by, by hearing about Jesus, she decides, I'm going to go and I'm going to receive my healing. Now, you know, you kind of used to hear people talk that way a long time ago. They'd, they'd be some kind of minister that God, a minister that God would use in divine healing in a special way. Like the gifts of healing manifestation, something like Oral Roberts or Brother Egg, something like that. But anyway, they, as they leave, they're, they're, it was determined they were going to receive their healing when he laid hands upon them. And you'd hear testimonies. See, testimonies are irrefutable proof that God is alive. The world, they're, they're going to have to see the miracles and signs and wonders to really believe God's alive. And what we as a church, we're to minister the way Jesus did, and we use his name. And this woman, when she heard of Jesus, she decided, I'm going to go touch him. Now, she could have said a lot of things. She could have said, I don't believe in that. She could have said, well, God doesn't always heal. She could have said that, you know, if I was supposed to be healed, I'd had it by now. If God would be healed, he'd use one of those doctors. You know, God raised up doctors to take place in divine healing and all kinds of stuff. But she could have said that, but she didn't. And thank God she didn't. And by, by being determined that she's not going to take anything else other than her healing, she got her healing. And when a person begins to learn about who they are in Christ Jesus, we, we need to learn. You, you remember Jesus said there in Matthew chapter 11, verse 20, verse 30, learn of me. So as soon as we become born again, we want to learn everything as fast as we can about what Jesus has done for us through his death, burial, and resurrection. That we find out we're new creatures in Christ Jesus. We find out they're the righteous of God in Christ. We, thank you, we find out that we're redeemed, we're delivered. And God blessed, uh, gave us all these blessings. And not only that, but he placed the curse of mankind after Adam and Eve sinned that came upon mankind upon Jesus Christ that hung on the cross. So not only Jesus took our sins, and thank God you know, that he did that, but also he took our punishment to sin. Sin had to be punished. Remember the Bible said, the soul that sinneth shall surely die. Well, that's why Jesus died, to take that curse upon him. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of law, being made a curse for us. For his written curse, serve on the hand of the tree. And he went on to say that the blessed of Abraham might call the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise for through faith. And if be Christ, the Abraham seed, there is a the promise. So we've been redeemed. And every person that's received Jesus Christ as Lord has authority in this earth. We have the name of Jesus. We have the Spirit of God dwell inside of us to lead us and guide us into all truth. And we need to, as believers, we need to learn to follow the inward witness, train ourselves to go and wait on God in prayer and seek the Lord about what he'd have us do in life. You know, frustration comes and all kinds of weird things come, of negative things come to all of us, but we need to wait on God about, see what he wants us to do. I remember when I, I hadn't been born again too long, and I had this guy working for me. We used to do floor covering. And he was so talented and so good. And uh, it was just a blessing to have the guy as far as the work that he could do. And uh, he had a lot of, you know, kind of a lot of issues going on in his life. And he wasn't born again. And, and so all day long, we're working. I got my cassette player going. This preachers are, are teaching God's Word. I need to listen to it every day. And so he's tolerating this, and the other guys is working for me or with us. They don't like the idea. They, they got together, you know, one time I went to, had to go somewhere and come back, do an errand, and, and they had a little committee they'd gotten together, and they were going to let me know they wouldn't listen to stuff anymore. <laughs> but praise God, it, I got to override it. But anyway, so I have these tapes playing. 
when I used to listen to it because they're in the background. I mean, you know, you'd have to hear it. So, you know, he, he went through, had all these issues going on in his life. And I tell him about Jesus. And, but every day, I, it seemed like every day, but at least every week, it, it, I, I'm going to get rid of him. He's caused me too much problems. Even though he's so good, so talented, a heck of a nice guy. It's just, and customers loved him, and, that, and you know, they liked him better than they did me. And the store liked him better, we worked for, than me. But the point is, um, I would think that I can't do this anymore because he wouldn't show up to work and other things going on. Uh, he's kind of, well, anyway, so um, I, I think that the day's the day. I, I went through the weekend, I'm coming in Monday, this is it, I'm going to deal with this, I'm going to address this, and he's out of here. Well, you know, that's how I woke up. I'm going to do this. But, you know, spend some time that day in prayer and then the Bible and, you know, c confessing scriptures, you know, and it come to my heart, you know, just keep him. Don't, don't get rid of him. Well, so, you know, I still got the problems going on. <clears throat> I'm thinking the way to get out of those problems is get rid of him. Well, there would have been problems anyway, but, you know, when you're in a situation like that, all you see is the problem. And what we need to realize is that we need to listen to what we got in our heart. Well, see, the Lord would calm me down. <laughs> And let me know in my heart, you don't get rid of me keeping. I mean, I didn't hear those words, but that's what I'm getting in my heart. Well, you know, thank God, the Lord, you know, was merciful to me and patient to me and, you know, didn't give up on me. And by keeping him, he ended up getting born again, baptized in the Holy Spirit, and several kinds of miracles happened in his life. He even got healed. But the point is, you see, there, there was that frustration there. And that comes to all of us. And then that, you know, trying to take care of ourselves. Well, we can't take any more. And that's it. I'm a, I've taken all that I'm going to take. Well, you know, that's why we have the love of God inside of us. And before we do something rash, we make a decision out of our emotions or feelings. We need to wait on God here and find out what God wants us to do. Because God sees the end of it. He's not just trying to torture us with, with all the suffering we're going through. But love grows that way. You know, if you love people that don't like it, your love grows. Whether they change or not, it keeps you and I in shape and practice. Well... You know, I'd want to get rid of him, but in my heart, I think I can't do this. And thank God, it, it, I didn't. You know, it would have been a big mistake. Well, as believers, we want to keep that determination. We're going to follow God. And the, when these feelings of negative feelings come to us, wait on God, see what God wants us to do. Most of us already know what he wants us to do. We just kind of monkey around with it, play around with it when we, when we shouldn't do that. Once we hear from God, we need to follow him. And he leads us by an inward witness. Not by some voice, but by an inward witness. You'll just know inside your spirit, inside your heart, you're supposed to do this. And, you know, that doesn't mean it's going to work out easy, but nevertheless, we need to follow that. And by knowing these exceedingly great and precious promises we read about there in Second Peter chapter 1, it's there verse 3 and 4, that we have these exceedingly great and precious promises, that by these we might be partakers of thine nature, having escaped the corruption of this world through lust. And the Bible says... Prove all things. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, prove all things. Hold fast, that was good. Abstain from the very appearance of evil. Well, we prove this out, what God wants us to do. Sometimes we're not too sure what exactly the Lord wants to do. And so I've said, Lord, I'm going to head in this direction. This isn't you. I think I'm going to know inside my heart this isn't you. Now, we're not moved by obstacles and roadblocks. That doesn't mean God doesn't want us to go. That, those are things out in the natural. Of course, Satan's going to do everything he can to try to hinder us from going on, trying to follow the Lord. But, Lord, I'm not real sure about this. I've been praying about this, and i got to make a decision here. And I'm going to head in this direction. If this is not you, I think you're going to let me know about this. Well, at least you find out, you know, about what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do in life. And we need to seek the Lord to find out what he wants us to do. And as we follow the Lord through prayer, through seeking God, then, you know, we get back on the road where God wants us to go if we got off the road. It's easy to kind of get off the path that you're following for the Lord. Thing of Michael Jordan, you know, and uh, he uh, won, had three titles in NBA championship. Well, his dad had, had you know, had been killed, and his dad always wanted him to play baseball. The way I get the story, and so after he he thought, you know, I've, I've made got these three championships, I've won. You know, what else is there to do? But I want to play baseball because my dad always wanted me to play baseball. So he played for minor league for the White Sox and did okay. You know, it just. Uh, but he found out that wasn't what he was supposed to be doing. And he went back and played for the NBA again and won three more titles. Now, one thing about it is he tried. You know, people criticized him and made fun of him. But first of all, he's going through something real emotional. He lost his dad. So, you know, we should cut him some slack. But then everybody, no, but it's easy to sit at home and watch TV and watch sports and watch football, baseball, and tell them everybody what needs to do. Oh, that stupid quarterback. Yeah, he, can he throw? 
well, like we could do tuning that they had, let's get rid of the ball. Well, you see, he found out about what he wasn't supposed to do. We tried, his dad always wanted to play baseball, we understand that, we like pleasing our parents and other people. But see, in doing so, he realized, you know, what am I supposed to be doing? I'm supposed to be playing basketball. Well, he proved it out. He went back to what he was supposed to be doing or had a talent to do. Not that he wasn't any good at baseball, he's okay, you know. But the point is, he tried it out. You gotta give him credit for doing that. I, I respect people, don't you, that try things out just to see if it's God or not. You know, not real sure, at least he tried it out. You know, like I always tell dad, hey dad, I tried. But the point is, as believers, so often they give up and quit because of some kind of hurdle. See, people make fun of that. They judged him over that, made fun of him for doing that. Not everybody, but some people do. Some people are just, bless our hearts, they're just, they're just haters. It's, they don't like themselves, so they find, you know, they usually get jealous over you or someone else. And, and you know, they, I mean, think of what kind of life they're living. They're not using what God had given them. And you get real miserable when you're not using the talent that God gave you. Everybody's got something that God gave them. Some people have more talents than others, but that doesn't mean God loves them more than others. They hold that hold them more accountable. But the point is, are we using what God gave us? Are we using the faith that he gave us? When we hear promise from God's word, we have a choice. We can choose to believe those promises and act upon those promises and do our part to receive from God. Or we can think, you say, well, you know, if God let me have that, he'd give it to me by now. Well, we didn't get born again that way. I mean, most of us, I know I could have got born again before I did. I just didn't act upon what people told me. I acted upon what God's word said eventually, but until that time, I had opportunities to do that, just didn't do it. I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday. I was asking him how he got saved. And he said, well, I was on this flight, and, and I think he was flying out of Connecticut, and, and the, his destination's uh, Virginia. But anyway, he has to land in, uh, I think Philly, but let's say Pennsylvania to get the right place. So uh, the, the flight was bad. It must have been a lot of turbulence He's on the flight. And he, the whole flight, you had to keep your seatbelt on. And some, uh, I guess it was so bad, some woman started screaming. Well, anyway, so he's, uh, the way I get from this, he's not too sure about taking the next flight. So he lands there, and, uh, you know, waiting for the next flight. And he's 21 years old. And some people came up and started talking to him. They're just a little, a little bit older than he was. They weren't in their 30s, but they're a little older than him. I got the picture was a guy and a woman. And, I, and I'm asking him how you got born again. He said, well, I was at the airport, and, and you know, I'm thinking about what I just got off here and what I'm supposed to be doing. They came up. They must have noticed I was a little you know, nervous or whatever, and they started talking about Jesus. Right at the airport, I, got, I received Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. I didn't know anything about going to church or anything else. And um, they left, and I left, and I got on board that next plane. He said, I'll tell you something, Brother Rich. When I got on the next plane, I don't care if a wing fell off. I was a brand new person inside me. I didn't have that fear any longer. It left me. And that was the beginning of his born-again Christian life. Well, you see, now think about it. That's pretty cool. People met him at the airport. He didn't talk to him about Jesus. Got him born again. I said, you ever see those people again? He says, no. Now, see, that's been a long time ago. But see, you know, they probably don't realize what impact they made on his life. I know the guys that witnessed to me, that I mean, unless God told them or somebody else told them, they don't know I got born again. But nevertheless, those are seeds we plant. And we plant those seeds every day. You and I follow God. We, we do what God leads us to do, and we should, because he's got a plan for our life. And, you know, we kind of like to mess around with it now and then. But nevertheless, you know, I've gotten off course before, and thank God for people praying for me. You know, I try things out, realize, you know, this isn't God, came back to what I'm supposed to be doing. But there's something that you and I are supposed to be doing. And don't get in condemnation over it and think, well, you know, I know I'm, the reason I don't have my blessing, I'm not doing what God told me to do. That's not true. We can't earn these blessings. They're freely given to you. Whether you obey God or not, the blessings belong to you. It's like the world. Jesus belongs to them. All they do is receive it. You know, it's not that God's holding him back. Salvation. Well, you know, the thing is, we'll have to be more peaceful inside of our spirit. You, you know, you can just tell you're in your niche. And you can tell when you're not. You know. Well, the point is, we need to learn to follow the Lord, stay with him. And we pray about this. Like I got frustrated with that guy that I was working for me. I got other people telling me, you need to get rid of him. He's causing you too much problems, you know. Look what he did on the job and all this other stuff, you know. Can't depend on him. Can't. And also, you know, that was all true. But there was something else that was more true. It's what I had in my spirit. <clears throat> and, you know, I wasn't the most patient person. But the po point is, I know in my heart, you don't do this. It's amazing. Sometimes you just know you can't. Now, you've done all this, but you can't do this. I heard this testimony about a guy that used to be in a mob. I think he uh, drove, uh, was a chauffeur for John Gotti, but that make a difference. But, uh, you know, he was a, kind of a tough guy. 
And his wife got born again. And she just went total for Jesus. And he's got a couple, I got a couple kids, uh, living in Jersey or wherever. And so she starts telling about Jesus. I mean, she's just one of those people that she, when she got born again, she ain't gonna shut up. So, and, and you know, just mention Jesus once someone's not saved, that's a lot. You know, that's like cramming religion down their throats, is what they say. Well, she kept telling about Jesus. Well, he, the, he, he got involved in some heavy stuff. And, and so when he came home one day, she said, that's it. I can't take any more. Me and the kids are leaving. He was doing some stuff that, you know, was really bad. And so, uh, but you need to be saved. You need to receive Jesus, Lord, and Savior. You can't keep doing what you're doing. Well, so, okay, so my wife left. And uh, one night, he had a few cocktails. He saw him drinking. And one night, his, he noticed his dog was real sick. So he called the vet. He knew a vet. And this late at night. And the vet said, well, bring him in now. And so uh, he took his dog to the vet, you know, and the dog examined the vet. I'm not too sure there's anything wrong with the dog at all. But the vet started talking to him about you need to receive the Lord. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. You got your wife praying for you, and you got this vet talking about you bring your dog, and he's talking to you about Jesus. So anyway, this... This guy, you know, he said, what in the world? I got, my, I got a crazy wife. I got this vet that's taught me about Jesus. And, and so he comes back to his neighborhood, and he notices, and that's real late at night, and he notices there's lights on the side of his house. And he thought, oh, I didn't leave all those lights on. And so he gets out of his car and, you know, parks down the street a little ways, and, and he gets out of his car and walks up like tippy-toe, he'd say, up to the house. And he finds two get, guys are in there looting the house. They're stealing his stuff. He had, he's always got his gun with him, so he pulls his gun out, and they had a van outside. They were going to load it up with his stuff. Apparently, you know, TVs and everything. So he told them both to get in the van. He taped them up with duct tape and took them out in the woods. And he got them, got them on their knees and going to execute them. And just as he started to pull the trigger, he heard this voice say to him, Now, I've helped you out up to this point. You do this, I can't help you. He's looking around, you know, and he said, I, I walked out of the woods. I mean, I, I, I never had something like this. Well, he left those guys just like that, you know. Thank God they, you know, didn't get killed. But see, people kept witnessing him, and finally he surrendered and got born again. And the ironic thing is, he got out of the mob, which, you know, you can only get out of that way. You know, the rules, you can't do that. But the point is, God had worked on him. Now, people talk to him about Jesus. You got a wife talking to him. You got a veterinary talking to him. You got God, like almost audibly, talking to him out in the woods. You see, God will move on our heart about some things. He wants us to witness. I mean, that could have been you and I at the airport talk to this dear guy about Jesus Christ. See, wherever we're at, we need to be stay, Brother Hagen used to say, keep your spiritual antenna up. In other words, stay in tune with God that you can hear from him. And God uses all of some people plants, some people waters. I mean, you could be somewhere and suddenly it just comes to you, you're supposed to give somebody $10 or pay for their drink or, or their meal, and you don't even know them, you know. Well, it doesn't mean they're going to drop on their knees right now and thank you and get saved, born again, and feel the Holy Spirit right there in the spot. That can happen. But we're planting the seeds. And see, all these people in that guy, in that mob guy's life was planting seeds. Someone else come along, they tell him about Jesus. Someone else come along, they tell him about Jesus. Now the circumstances are going bad. Well, now he got just as fanatical in a good way for Jesus Christ as his wife did. Ended up using his testimony. I think the last time I heard it, Norville told me he was pastor church in Florida. Clearwater, I think it was. But anyway, think about this. See, here God took this man's life and totally turned around with all the obstacles he went to. You know, in many times in our life, the Lord leads us to tell somebody something. And you may, maybe we didn't even plan on doing this. We were just going over to talk to him or we we're getting our car worked on or something like that. Suddenly you just get this in your heart, you got to talk to him about me. And again, you just plant a seed and let that be so. And our testimony each of us have a story how Jesus saved us, where we were at, how that happened. We may not remember the exact day or time, but as a child or an adult or as, you know, wherever. And I received Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. That's a witness, see? And that's the witness that God will use. When you tell your witness to someone, you tell them how you got saved, how you received Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. And use, use scripture like Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. You're not talking about your church. Now, thank God for bringing people to church. And you should bring people to church. You know, it's in one way, many people got saved. I was invited to church. That's how I got saved. Someone asked me to come to their church, and I tried to wiggle out of it. And try. I was real uncomfortable. And, yeah, I think I even lied about it, but I didn't want to go. But nevertheless, you know, they were persistent. And thank God for people we can bring to church and get them saved. And it's, it's important to do that.
but nevertheless, we're out there in the world also. We're in a world we're not of the world, so we, we plant these seeds in people's lives about Jesus Christ. And that's how your church grows, is by you bringing people in. That the Lord will use you to bring people in, invite people in, bring it. There's you know kinds of ways God will move on you and, and, and lead you to bring people to your church where they preach the gospel. They have to hear about Jesus. They have to hear about how to receive Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. Because they're like I was, they don't know you're supposed to do that. Yet I went to church, I just didn't know you're supposed to receive Jesus Christ, your Lord. People came and witnessed to me, and someone invited me to go to the church, and the rest is history. You know, I'm going to encourage you to keep stepping out for the Lord. And be like this woman with the issue of blood. She was determined she's going to receive from Jesus. Have that kind of determination. No matter what you're faced with today, find promises to cover what you're faced with. And then be determined to receive from those promises what God said. That no one's going to take those promises away from you. You're not anybody to take it. And you can hold up those promises. Someone told this woman about Jesus. Someone told you about Jesus. Someone told me about Jesus. Each one must have our own testimony about Jesus. And that's what Jesus wants to do, is use you to tell someone. Then God confirms that word with signs following. Every day of our life, we're praying, and I'm not going to let any of this, you know, the things that's going on in the natural keep me from receiving Jesus, or telling other people about Jesus, and keep me from receiving what Jesus has bought and paid for and freely gave to me. I'm going to pray for you today. Father God, I pray for my dear friend and viewer today. I thank you, Lord, for meeting all their needs. I thank you, Father God, that they're healed, their family and loved ones are protected by the blood of Jesus. And I give you all the praise and glory, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to encourage you about they depend on you. They're looking to God to meet their needs. But they're depending on you for your support. And your financial support is a great blessing to them. Our tithes and offerings help, uh, help expedite the gospel. It's what God uses to pay the bills. And thank God and pray every day that God will lead you to take people to church or to services where they're preaching the gospel, preaching the word, and invite them to come. And by doing and it's up, you know, God will work on the person. If you haven't received Jesus Christ, Lord, and say, well, let's pray this prayer unite together. Just say it out loud. And if people around you don't want to do that out loud, just learn today to receive Jesus Christ, my Lord. I believe in my heart that Jesus hung on a cross, took my sins, and died, and was raised from the dead. And I confess right now that Jesus is alive, he's been raised from the dead, and Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Amen. And if you did that, I would encourage you to start going to church somewhere. Uh, you know, God will lead you, but go to church, get you a Bible, and start reading your Bible. Start with the book of John. Start reading the Gospel of John. Read through that, and the Holy Spirit will start teaching you God's Word. And then just do whatever God leads you to do that plan. If you have a prayer request today, you can go on our website, Just Rich Minister. Or if you've got a testament, I'd like to hear what you receive from the service we've been doing in the morning. And thank God for those. They're helping build people up. Share it with someone else. Let someone else know about it. Our website's got some scripture sheets on there, especially that divine healing scripture and you, uh, sheet. And you definitely want to get the daily devotion. Send out, emailed out, eat it, emailed out in the morning. And sign up for that. That'll that come to you. And every day you want to read those. They're, they're teachings from God's Word. If you'd like to receive my morning text at 7 o'clock in the morning, I'm just going to remind you to pray and read your Bible. If you'd like to have that, give me your text, your cell number so I can text you and send those out to you. Enjoyed being with you today. I want to encourage you. Keep sharing Jesus with someone else. Don't give up on him. Keep praying for him. Till next, and definitely pray for your country. Till next time, it's Brother Rich Money. I love you. and praying for you. Remember, Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father.